would like to lead off today's video by saying a big congratulations to Sarasota, Florida native Emma Wyant for being a class act and being a champion both in the pool and out of the pool. We here in Florida recognize you for the champion that you are, and we are very proud of you. Incredibly well done. Now, kind of on the same note, there's a science alert that they've had to wait a long time to release, and it's going to make some people squirm. And this is a fully fact-checked article. Science alert. And yes, believe it or not, that is the name of a magazine, sciencealert.com. From nature, scientists create RNA that evolves on its own. Huh. Imagine that. RNA that can evolve on its own. This could be, could be how life on Earth started. Well, I suppose that's one idea. We just received more evidence that life on Earth may have started with RNA. Well, they got the amount of letters right. They just got them wrong here. With scientists in Japan creating RNA that can replicate, diversify, and develop complexity all on its own. Hmm. Let's keep reading. Long before Earth had its first budding cells of primordial ooze, it was awash with a churning organic soup that sat on the brink of something profound. That thin line between complex chemistry and the evolution of life represents a pivotal moment in the emergence of biology. Unfortunately, for all of its importance, we know very few details about exactly what, how, or when it happened. We're just basically making it up, is what they're saying. An experiment conducted by the scientists from the University of Tokyo has now reinforced the view that RNA's unique talents have what it takes to explain how life bubbled forth billions of years ago, backing up what's known as the RNA world hypothesis. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are asking, Florida Maki, what is the RNA world hypothesis? Well, I'm glad you asked. We have it right here. An explainer is a proposed explanation for how life emerged on Earth just out of basic chemistry. One long-standing paradox over the nature of life's origins is how modern biochemistry could possibly have evolved through natural selection to govern its own replication in the first place. Today, this process is the result of a well-coordinated mix of complex molecular interactions, none of which representing a living system on their own. Let me repeat this none of which representing a living system on their own, the development of any one component in isolation raises a chicken and egg conundrum. Ribonucleic acids are a family of organic chemical units that form complex molecules capable of both encoding information and performing physical tasks. I think we should probably read that again too. Ribonucleic acids are a family of organic chemical units that form complex mo molecules capable of both encoding information and performing physical tasks. This multitasking might have allowed, might have allowed them to enact lifelike functions on ancient Earth that slowly evolved to incorporate more advanced forms of living chemistry. Proposals for some kind of RNA world hypothesis have been around for decades in the 1960s. Scientists, including Fran Francis Crick and American biophysicist Carl Woese, have, I hope that's how you pronounce that, have highlighted RNA's potential in performing a variety of life-supporting tasks without the direct support of DNA or proteins. Hmm. DNA. You mean the thing that makes you what you are? That no matter what you identify, you can't change your own DNA? Really? Hmm. Science says that, huh? Imagine that. Accepted science says that. In 1986, American biochemist and Nobel laureate Walter Gilbert coined the term RNA world to describe a hypothetical, hypothetical state of ancient Earth that could create such diverse forms of nucleic acids, each competing in a way that imposed natural selection to encourage increasing forms of chemical complexity. The idea is still somewhat contentious. What evidence do we have? Absolutely zero. Absolutely zero. So far, evidence is mostly circumstantial. No, it's completely circumstantial or it doesn't exist. RNA can encode and copy just like DNA while also catalyzing simple reactions more or less like proteins. 
This could potentially have allowed self-replicating RNA-based enzyme equivalents, known as ribozymes, to support the physical processes needed for making imperfect copies, giving rise to molecular evolution. Just how any one family of nucleic acid operated in a mixture raises challenging questions. Meaning, they're just spitballing here. Now, back to the original article, before we defined what RNA world was. The research that they're showing now on RNA shows that it might not have happened exactly as we thought. This is science speak for, we just realized we were totally wrong, and we have to say it in a way that doesn't sound like we're saying we're totally wrong. Their work shows how a molecule that remains crucial to the survival and reproduction of every living thing today can inch its way toward an evolving system if it works as a team. You mean like with other RNA? We found that the single RNA species evolved into a complex replication system. A replicator, those of you who are of Stargate um, fandom will understand the term replicator here, network, comprising five types of RNAs with diverse interactions, supporting the plausibility of a long-envisioned evolutionary transition scenario. Stripped to its barest essentials, life is made up of molecules that can make imperfect copies of themselves, churning out a virtually limitless population of variants, which might or might not hold it together long enough to make copies of themselves. Long story short, has anyone ever gone out in their yard and ever seen a squabbit, an arm squirrel, a squiger? I wouldn't even know what to call a squirrel giraffe. A squibra? No. Because certain systems operate in within the parameters of their own system and not outside. There are variations, of course. There are fox squirrels and gray squirrels and there's black squirrels. And there's tigers and there's leopards and there's cheetahs. But even tigers, leopards, and cheetahs can't intermix. And rabbits are rabbits are rabbits and zebras are zebras. And there's nothing you can do to change that. Nothing you can do to change that. How do they know? They've tried. They were able to successfully mate a lion and a tiger, but it didn't quite turn out like they thought it would. The animal they created was nothing that could have survived in the wild. Now, I have a woods behind the house full of squirrels, and I'm sure they're the product of countless generations going back perhaps hundreds, if not thousands of years. And they look and behave and act just like squirrels did during the revolution in North America and just like they did a thousand years ago and just like 2,000 years ago. There might be some minor differences. But there's always going to be a squirrel. You're always going to be what you are. A moose will always be a moose. And a squirrel will always be a squirrel. When we start accepting that the biodiversity of life is an incredible blessing and that we should just take who and what we are and make the best of it, I think we'll all be a lot happier without trying to be something we're not. You see, Emma Wyatt, she's not trying to be something she's not. She's trying to be the best possible version of Emma Wyatt that she can be. And that's why she's a champion in Florida. And she'll always be a champion in Florida from now until the end of time. She's the only swimmer anyone should be talking about. Emma Wyatt. Sarasota, Florida native. You have done a fantastic job in illustrating accepted science, fact-checked science that we can now prove. 
And I'll leave it there. Have a great weekend. God bless. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.